and is only suitable for people aged 18 or over will almost certainly have an adult theme and might well contain sex or violence which are quite graphic. It may also contain explicit language, including sexual swear words. Thanks for listening. Uh, but here's what his revelation comes to him. He's kind of got all this stuff, like, uh, touching, wiping, mourning of the animals. Not wiping, whipping. Whipping. Yeah. Also, yeah, not torture. Touch, also not touching. I am, <laughs> I am dyslexic. I, I hope I'm not having like, a stroke. Do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! And an atheist almost always becomes supporters of eugenics and abortion. A swine is hungry for nuts. Jesus hates him too. Yeah. Satan is real. Being a Satanist is an open declaration of revolt against counterproductive received wisdom and mindless rogue tradition. Decapitate her head off. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Obama! I'll be at work. <clears throat> so it's spring forward, right? Yep. So I wonder if they're going to make me take an hour of, stay an extra hour at work or take an hour of leave. Yeah, the sun will go down an hour later. Wait, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh. Sorry, I fucked you well, guys up. Well, we're talking right now. I fucked you guys up. I'm sorry. Well, doing, fuck it. We'll just it's go. doing the records already. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Was this your plan all along? No. <laughs> just to get that in there. <laughs> no. Well, welcome to the Godless Revolution, everybody. This is episode 147. Today is Wednesday, March 8th. And my name is Dan Ellis. And I'm Matt Mitchell. <gasps> my name's Ryan Duffy. You said your whole name. <laughs> he did. I think that's the f- I think that's the first time ever. No, I don't think so ever. But I was waiting for Ryan to say it, and he just didn't. He just had was, sat was, there with his mouth open. Because I was looking at you. <laughs> and and so like, I started saying I it, and then he never it. did it. So <laughs> I was going to make you do it. I put you on, see, I put you on the spots. So that way you didn't know what to do. Like, <gasps> oh, uh, Matt Mitchell? Well, we were going to be synchronized, and you messed it up, Ryan. <laughs> hey, I mess everything up. <laughs> Well, I don't I just, write scripts for this show anymore. I was just thinking in my head, you guys. And then I remembered how fucking grossed out you guys made me last week. You said what? you can't remember last week's episode. Not really. What did I do? You guys remember fucking grossing me out with the with the talking of the things and the grossness? I Every show? <laughs> um, no. Were we talking about midget spiders again? No. No? No, no. No, it was like... Uh, I don't know, dismembering people, something. I don't. I don't even remember. I don't remember that. I, I mean, just remembered you did it. I, tried, I, did, I blocked it. I did it. not dismember anyone. I did not go Alex Jones. I have blocked on it from my memory. Okay. That's that's what it was. I just remembered that it happened. Hmm. And it was I don't bad. remember the details. I was so traumatized. Well, what? my mom, my mom didn't yell at me for it, so it couldn't have been that bad. She did yell at you for your language, apparently. Well, all of ours. I'm thinking. <laughs> no, because you no, because the text said Ryan Patrick Duffy. It didn't say Ryan, Matt, and Dan. Right. Well, I'll make my mom correct that next time. <laughs> it was in all caps. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Patrick Duffy. That's, that's how I know I'm in trouble for something. <laughs> yeah, and it's not it's not her fault that our mamas didn't raise us right. It's it's only her fault that you are doing this on the show. And so. ordinarily, we don't swear at all, Mrs. Duffy. Ryan oh, is just a really terrible influence. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the truth. <laughs> What are we doing tonight? Uh, we're going to talk about stuff. I don't know if you wanted to talk about uh, some so of the for, first we, upcoming <clears throat> stuff. or Yeah, first up, we have some announcements. Uh, over the next three weeks, we've got three guests that will be on the show. We hadn't had a There's guest. There's not room enough in here for three guests. <laughs> it's one per week over the next three weeks. Oh. Well, we hadn't had a guest for a little while. Words have meanings, Dan. And then <laughs> I went on a guest booking spree and booked people for the next three weeks in a row. So Yay. I also want to, when we when we do interviews with our guests, I want to try to get them to be longer and extend them out. I've got a little... A little plan in my in my brain pan about how to do these things going forward that I think will be good. Very well said. Yeah, that was clear as clear as mud. All that. Well, because it's thank a you. secret. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I don't want to tell them all the things. No, I can tell you. I want to do instead of just talking to somebody about a current event or a thing where you may not really know who they are or what they've done or anything. I want to do a getting to know you kind of thing. Ah, yeah. Have a have an extended interview and talk to people about a lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. next week we've got Stu DeHaan from uh, the Satanic Temple Arizona chapter. Yeah, and the following the week after that we're gonna have Yvette Detremont, this Cy Babe. Yes. Awesome. 
And the week after that, we will have Mr. Jason Stock, who is, who is the reason he's the person who first introduced me to any atheism, anything. He's the first openly atheist person that I had ever met. Uh, this was back in 1994 when we were both working at a shitty company doing a shitty job, but still had fun somehow. Yeah, but that's not the cool part. The cool part is that he's a brewmaster. Yes. <laughs> He is the brewmaster for uh, squatters here locally and makes all kinds of delicious beers. And beyond all of that is just one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. Just super cool, awesome, very nice, intelligent, and is a former Mormon who also went on a mission. Mm. So, And the story there is kind of fun, too. And you all get to hear it. Yeah, it'll be very cool and interesting. And I'm looking forward to all three interviews very, very much. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of listener feedback to get through. We got a suggestion for content from Mr. Brandon Osborne, who says, you were talking about medical slash pharmacological choices to provide abortion and birth control prescriptions on a recent episode. Something I've heard mentioned but not really given good coverage is the idea of women choosing tubal ligation. A topic I've had come up several times in my various discussions is that when women have requested sterilization, their doctors have balked or even outright refuse to perform the procedure because, quote, your future husband might want children someday. Well, what if she's a lesbian, asexual, or she doesn't want to have kids for whatever reason she has? Now, I understand there may be some sane and cautionary advice to be had by a physician when a young woman comes in and says, quote, I don't want to have kids, tie them off. But isn't that her choice, even if it's not the best thought out choice? I've heard a couple of women say that they were shut down by their physician and felt pressured to wait or give up the idea entirely. Anyway, I think this is an important part of the fertility choice package that gets overlooked in the face of more hot button issues. Hmm. Well, I've heard of men getting shut down as well. I had a buddy that had two kids and the doctor says was trying to get him not to get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Today, today needs to really be focused on men. What else you got, Ryan? <laughs> well, that's my only experience with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I should mention that today, during while we're recording this, today is uh, International Women's Day. Yeah. Women's Day, yeah. International Women's Day. Uh, yes. yes. You misogynistic <laughs> pricks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's a wonderful thing. I posted a thing out on Facebook mm -hmm. after reading some very frustrating comments <laughs> yeah. from some fucking yeah. uninformed, privileged people. Fucking little shits, man. Yeah, bro. Where's where's my men's day, bro? I get fucking tired of people who don't have any idea what the fuck they're talking yeah. about, but they're given this platform to say and do whatever they want, which is fine. But Jesus fucking Christ, man. If you don't want to look like an asshole and then you're going to complain about people calling you an asshole afterward, maybe you just shouldn't be an asshole in the first place. That would solve a lot of problems. It would solve a lot of problems and headaches for the people that you're being an asshole to and would solve a lot of problems and headaches for you later when you whine about being called an asshole. Call it like it is. Just, yeah. It, it, someone had made some comments about how, and it's the same bullshit you hear from other stuff. They, they made a comment about, oh, International Women's Day. Oh, boo-hoo. Why do women get a special day? Why don't men get a special day? I thought they wanted equality, but now they want a special day. It's, they've, they've always, they've had it for quite a while. Um, it's not a new thing. No, it's not at all. Um, uh, <laughs> but so I made this post down on Facebook because I got fucking tired of it. And I just said, asking, why isn't there an International Men's Day? It doesn't make you look smart or edgy. It makes you look like an uninformed asshole. Exactly the type of asshole who would ask other dumb questions like, Why is there no straight pride festival? Or, Why is there no white history month? If you really need to ask those questions, type them into the Bing search bar on your fucking browser. Ask fucking Siri or fucking Google that shit. Don't act like a petulant child and demand that the rest of us teach you what you should already fucking know. Happy International Women's Day, motherfucker. Do a little homework and learn some shit. Maybe they're homeschooled. By a self-hating woman? Well, if it's a Christian homeschooling, yes. Because you know it's not the father teaching him. No. It's got to be a woman because her place is in the home. Yeah. And he's out earning a living. Yeah. A living. A living? A living. A living. Is that like a living? A, a, a dividing? <clears throat> yes. But going back to Brandon's question... And comment and, and what he wanted us to talk about. 
I remember when uh, my ex-wife uh, gave birth. After she gave birth to Lydia, we had talked about it while she was pregnant. Like, we're done having kids. We don't want any more than two kids. Yeah. And we're, we're done. Yeah. So she was going to get a tubal ligation. And in talking to her uh, doctor, she told him, you know, that while you're down there anyway during birth, why don't we do the tubal ligation at the time? And he tried to discourage her and said, well, you've only got, you know, this will only be your second child. Yeah. And what if you want more children down the road? Or what if you want more than one child with your husband or he wants another child? And I'm like, no, no, no. We're done. We're done. I don't want any more children. She doesn't want any more children. This is this is her choice. And he's like, okay, well, we can do that. But I would caution you just because people change their minds all the time. Maybe you want to take some time to think about it. Like I thought about it for the last nine months. You know, take take six months, a year, whatever. But just really put some time into thinking about it. And we're both like, no, we've thought Done about that. this for, you know, she's close to he giving birth at this yeah. point. And we're like, oh, we've talked about this for nearly nine months or longer. And we don't want any more kids, so this is what we'd like to have happen. And he, he, you know, he talked us out of it. He's like, well, just wait. The other point of how he was able to talk us out of it at the time is that he said, you know, a tubal ligation is a lot more intrusive when you're, when you're looking at sterility choices and controlling, uh, controlling pregnancy between a couple. It's much less intrusive and the recovery time is a lot less for, for a man to get a vasectomy than it is for a woman to go through a tubal mm -hmm. ligation. It's also much more easily reversed if later you change yeah. your mind. So I just basically said, okay, well, we'll think about it, blah, blah, blah. We left, went back later when my daughter was born, of course, to the hospital. She had the baby, and Lydia was not breech. She was sideways. So... Hmm. The doctor tried to turn her a couple times, mm -hmm. like manually turn her yeah. while she's still in the in utero, yeah. and that was <laughs> that was interesting to watch. You're gonna break it, yeah. <laughs> if you if you uh, you should probably just Google some videos about how they try to manipulate the baby's situation within the womb before birth. If they're like a, breach or like an MMA fight with the child or sideways, just just watch some videos on how they do that and how uncomfortable slash painful it is for the woman. And then you'll realize how much worse it is later when I get to the point of Lydia, he, he would manipulate her and then use the ultrasound machine. Mm -hmm. And you could see her just slide right back into, ah. into being sideways. <laughs> and he, he tried it twice while we were there for one visit. And, you know, he shows on the ultrasound. She's totally sideways. He'd, had my had my ex get into all different kinds of positions <laughs> and do all kinds of crazy shit to move her and then he'd put the ultrasound on and she's she's facing the right way and then you'd see her just slide right back to where she was before because apparently that's how she was comfortable so when we left the doctor's office he told us that when my wife had contractions and felt like she was going to go into labor she needed to crawl into the back seat of the car and lay down instead of sitting in the passenger seat because most likely, since my daughter was sideways, the first thing to come out would be my daughter's arm. Yeah. And he didn't want my ex-wife sitting, sitting on the baby's arm and breaking it. So just th now that you have that mental image in your mind, because Lydia was sideways, uh, she was born C-section. Mm. And I was there in the hospital room during the C-section and saw everything that went on. My ex-wife is very squeamish about blood and guts and stuff. Well, they put up that little blinder for it, didn't so they? So she, yeah. So she yeah. had like this wall of blankets yeah. between her upstairs and her downstairs so that she couldn't see anything that's going on. But I'm standing up, looking over the wall, watching everything that's going on. And after they cut her open <laughs> and and pulled my daughter out, who then... Came out and immediately peed everywhere and started crying. And the nurses whisked her away to clean her up. And then the doctor was doing all of his stuff and junk. And he's got his arm inside her almost up to his elbow. And I can see the tips of his fingers 
on the inside of her stomach, yeah, like, like alien. Yeah, and he's creepy. just raking shit out of there, just raking yeah. stuff out of the inside, pulling it all out. And she's just kind of flopping around on the table as he's doing all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, I, 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 I'll go get the vasectomy. Like, <laughs> just watching what you're going through now. Like, done. If you can do this, I can go have a vasectomy. That, that'll be, that'll be our trade off. And we had talked about it more after the doctor's mm-hmm. visit and decided basically, you know, that was going to be the best option because it's more easily reversible. Just basically what all, all of the points that the doctor had made. Yeah. And so I went in and had a vasectomy and, like a dumbass, I didn't follow all of the doctor's directions. And immediately upon returning home, there are two kinds of vasectomies that you can get. The first is where they cut a slit on either side of your sack and they pull the vast tubes out of there, you know, one on each side. Yeah. They cut it, then tie it off, poke it back in. Or you can get the one like I did, which is... Which doesn't leave as many scars is apparently better. Well, <laughs> we're just at the base of your penis. They poke a hole or make a small incision and they stretch the hole out. But then they have to root around with forceps to Fuck grab the vast that. tube to pull it out of the, out of the hole. And then you get a shot directly into the vast tube to numb it before they cut a, a small Whoa. chunk out of the vast tube and then cauterize each end and then tie it off. And then they go in for the other side. And the whole time I felt like somebody was just punching me in the junk just a speed bag yeah so get all of that done go home and of course before you leave it's like okay just relax take it easy for the rest of the day maybe the following day don't lift anything heavy don't overexert yourself whatever and this was close to a year after we had lydia and i went home walked in the door and she came running over was like daddy 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 and I picked her up and felt a little pop and then had my right testicle was the size of mm-hmm. a little bit, little bit larger than a softball. My left testicle was a little bit larger than a an orange. <laughs> oh, okay. Than an orange. But they were both fucking huge and yeah. black and blue. I had to, whenever I went to sit down, I had to lift my junk up <laughs> onto my lap. And then sit there with an ice pack uh, on my giant uh, swollen testicles. Yeah. It was not very fun. Doesn't, but still probably better than a tubal ligation for her after going yeah. through all of the childbirth and everything. Um, and I know other friends who have wanted to go in and have a tubal ligation because they know they're just, they're never going to have yeah, kids. Yeah. And they have a really hard time finding a doctor who will do that for them. Well, and there was a case here in Utah, I thought that was, uh, it was that one of the you know Saint Mary of child death, uh, you know hospitals, and uh, <laughs> Saint Mary child death hospitals. Yeah. We have a related story coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, thought that might be a <laughs> no, but uh, oh, I, I've no, heard yeah. of people that have been in that situation where they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. We can do that for you." Do the whole uh, C-section deliver? Then they go. How did everything go? Oh, we have one all. Everything went perfect, and then they didn't do the tubal ligation. Like, oh, sorry, we we don't do that here. It's like, well, but you said you would. And the people ended up taking up a lawsuit against the uh, hospital. Oh, was this at a was this at a religious hospital? Yes. Uh. Even though they were told, yeah, we can do this for you. Then they didn't do it. Like, well, yeah, we kind of. Well, we can. We didn't. We didn't ever said we would. would. We just said we can. Like doctors <laughs> object to it because it's a form of abortion. I can give you ten thousand dollars. Doesn't mean I'm going to. Yeah, it's not. It's not a form of abortion. They believe it is. They believe condoms are a fucking form of abortion. Because you're not letting nature run do its, its course. course. Yeah. Hmm. The Pope recently said something about that. Did he? Perhaps we can cover that in a little ah. bit as well. Same old bullshit, but... I thought you just said, not, don't have as many kids. It's like, knock that shit off. It's delivered... Well, yeah, exactly. But don't use condoms. Right. So just don't have sex, basically. Yeah. Because Fuck you, Pope. You can't... You know, and really having sex is only for procreative purposes anyway. I'm not going to have kids. I'm just going to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have kids. I'm just going to have fun. It's a new song. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. Yeah, I mean, 
<clears throat> but I think, I think it's totally irresponsible of people who d- can't afford to have kids and just keep doing it anyway. Yeah. But that's the mo- that's the majority of kids. Majority of kids are born into houses that can't afford to have them. And the majority of kids aren't planned either. I mean, yeah, very, very, very few kids are born into a house that's prepared for them and financially ready for them. Mm-hmm. Like less than 5% probably. I'll, I'll, I'd have to look up the numbers. I'm sure it's pretty fucking low. Uh, well, and of course it's going to be different worldwide, which is what I was thinking. Oh, okay. But, but certainly in the, uh, but certainly the majority of, of kids are born without being well prepared for. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that they're not well taken care of. It's just that, or not when you want see, it around once they yeah, yeah, sure. arrive. But. Sure, I mean, in some cases that that happens, of course. But mm-hmm. um, I think it's highly irres- well. First of all, I think it's irresponsible for people to have more than like one or two kids anyway, given the population and the sustainability. Yeah, right. I think that's just pure selfishness. Yeah, it's it's not sustainable. You can't you can't yeah. do that indefinitely. It's totally irresponsible. Um, but. If you can't afford them, especially, mm-hmm. you know, and so, but that's why idiocracy is becoming a uh, documentary because <laughs> it's, that's what's going on. And Trump it's and fucking him. scary. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's becoming uh, a prophecy, not a documentary. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand the doctor's motivation and wanting to discourage people from doing it. If they think that they haven't thought it through well enough or that they want them to think about it more if they think they're too young, whatever. But I mean, at some point it's your body. It's your choice. Like your doctor should give you good medical advice about how to maintain your health, how to do these different things, but they're not there to second guess your decisions with what you choose to do with your own body. Yeah. That's your body. Why, why don't they counsel people against not getting all of the plastic surgery that they do? I mean, if that's the issue, sure. We're talking about, well, it's not just a personal Cosmetic choice. Surgery. It's also a financial choice for people. Yeah. Like, I can't afford kids. Right. I don't want to actually have one. Yeah. But you can also look at the number of kids that are available for adoption or yeah. who need yeah. parents. Exactly. That, you know, w- you don't have to go out and make more of them. There are there are children to be had. But that's, yeah. a, world. that's a really <laughs> hard thing to do, though. That's a yeah. hard process. Yeah. And in that case, you do have to be financially ready, and you do have to be prepared. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there, there is a whole there is there is a whole issue behind there that, and it's set up in, in, on purpose that way, but it's just easier to have an oopsie than to adopt one that's all that's already alive yeah. and uncared yeah. for. You know. Yeah. You know, when they do adopt, like we're going to adopt a kid from South Korea because he's impoverished and not one of the one hundred thousand kids in the U.S. And, that needs a yeah, home. right here in the U.S. Well, but they're older and not as cute. But they're also depends if you get them right out of the hospital. I mean, the paperwork's a little harder. They're also not your your genetics either, which is important to some people. Yeah, I want my own baby, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I I guess I can understand that. It's evolutionary. It is. Yeah. Well, and I don't I don't want to get a psychopath. Yeah, you're yeah, you're only going to adopt a fucked up kid. I mean, there's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be my luck. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, some of Ed Gein's s- semen was still in a cryogenic freeze, and that Dude, woman got Wisconsin, pregnant. Dude, you it's going to be sixes uh, either way. It's I know. really like either he's going to make skin suits or eat them. <laughs> yeah, you have Ed Gein's in you already. I probably do. I don't know. There's a lot of stu- There's a lot of stupid things that human beings do. There is. <laughs> well, yeah, when, well, that's why we have a show. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know why I said that like Jimmy Stewart. But <laughs> that's why we have that's a show. show. That's, that's why we have a show. <laughs> no, I was thinking because it was the 20 year anniversary of me adopting Gray mm-hmm. recently, right? Yeah. So we the whole family went out for dinner to celebrate, and. We're standing there, and ever since I adopted Gray, my dad has been pushing to have Gray change his last name to my last name. Oh, yeah. And it's that's, fucking stupid, yeah, right? It's yeah. it's a name. It doesn't yeah. fucking mean anything. No, yeah. It's just a name. It's just a sound. It's a sound that you make with your mouth yeah. or something that you write out. It doesn't fucking mean anything. Yeah, that is funny. Hm. And my dad keeps pushing to have Gray change his last name to Ellis, and so we're standing there, and... He's he's like, well, so so when are you going to change your last name to Ellis? I mean, you've been an Ellis now for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. And Gray's like, yeah, it's probably not going to happen. No. <laughs> like, now and Gray's so cool about just playing it off, you know, just yeah. 
would have been funny if he's going to say, nah, I think I'm going to change it to fuck you, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I said something kind of similar. Because, <laughs> you know, he's he's doing all this and it's like, it, it's pissing me off because yeah. he's done it for 20 fucking years yeah. now. And I'm getting fucking tired of it. And I was just like, why Why would he have to change it? I mean, what's in a name? It doesn't fucking matter. Besides, Marquesi's a much cooler name than Ellis. I mean, that's a cool fucking name. He could be a singer. And and my dad's like, yeah. no, Ellis is great. He should change his name to Ellis. And I'm like, like the island? Maybe I'll change my last name to Marquesi. What then? Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just fucking started kicking rocks. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bullshit. Does your dad wear tank tops a lot? No. Oh. He goes shirtless. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I just, all the time, I always picture him in, like, cut-off sleeves. <laughs> nope. Nope, no cut-off sleeves. Uh, it's usually... No sleeves? It's usually... No shirt. Yeah. Usually a short-sleeve shirt, and always shorts. He wore, he actually wore pants to dinner. It was hmm. the first time I've seen him in pants, I think, since my sister's funeral. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He does not wear pants very often. And always yeah. short-sleeve shirts. I don't wear shorts. I wonder what he wears to church. <laughs> uh, because he's got to wear pants to church, right? He can't wear shorts nah, to church. He's got his I mean, long sleeve garments. Huh. I hadn't he, thought about that until just now. They say you can wear whatever you want, but... but They'll criticize you. Yeah, they will. Huh. I'll have to ask him. That, I, <laughs> honestly, that hadn't occurred to me until just now. He has his Sunday shorts. <laughs> the fancy ones yeah. with mm-hmm. the pleats in the front. Yep. So, hey, Dad, three of us were talking a bunch of shit about you on our show that goes out <laughs> to a bunch of people. And uh, we really want to know. All three of us want to know if you have pleated shorts <laughs> that you wear to church. Or what other stupid thing do you wear to your stupid church, Dad? <laughs> Just curious, wondering. That'd be hilarious. No, but... Definitely record that conversation, and we'll put it on next week's show. Yeah. <laughs> go, to, go to Radio Shack before they He's... before they crumble and buy one of their little the wiretapping l- devices. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's the so kind funny. that Obama used. It's so funny because, like I, I mean, I've mentioned it before. You know, apparently now he's super religious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother goes to church every Sunday that she's not in Wendover, <laughs> and they're talking. You know, they're sitting there and they're talking to us, and then they are talking to each other about church a little bit. And then my grandmother starts talking about how excited she is to go to Las Vegas and gamble. Ah. She's gonna, she's taking a trip to Las Vegas and she's gonna be gambling. And I'm like, this is directly verboten in your church, man. You're not supposed to do this. Mormons are not supposed to gamble. Yeah. How's that? How's well, that different from going and getting fine, a tattoo or going that, and doing drugs or and going then, and drinking? And then I'm talking about having fucking coffee. Oh. And my dad's like, yeah, I really miss that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Just have Grandma's it. going to Las Vegas to go gambling and you won't have a fucking cup of coffee? Give me a break. That's fucking nonsense. I don't understand. Like, how do you pick and choose? Well, gambling's okay, but that coffee, <laughs> really, Straight really bad. Hell. Can't drink coffee anymore. And my grandma likes coffee. Yeah. And she used to have coffee occasionally and she doesn't anymore. I don't know. It's just you weird can, how they pick and choose what they're going to follow of the church's Joseph Smith teachings and fuck commandments. kids. I mean, he, it's like, you know, you, you just pick and choose. Does he drink rock stars all day, though? No. No, he's diabetic, so. Well, doesn't stop the rest of them. Drinks Diet Coke, I think. or di- No, he drinks Diet Root Beer. Which isn't any better. Which is a very Utah thing, too. Um, anyway, I don't know if we actually answered Brandon's question. Yeah. But if we <laughs> if we didn't, please let us know. If we did, let us know. Uh, but thank you bullshit. very much for contacting Either us. way, you're talking I, to us, Brandon. I think it is bullshit that, yeah. that women can't just go in and say, this is my body, this is what I would like you to do. I'm paying you for this service. You are my doctor. Make sure you do everything medically reasonable and correctly that you're supposed to right, do. Right, right. But – I'm letting you know this is my choice. This yeah. is what I want you to do yeah. as my medical yeah, provider. Yeah, we're, we're not hiring you to offer your moral decision on this. You just you just right. do the procedure I'm telling you to do that I'm paying you for. Right. Yeah, it's like a mechanic. You don't – Right. Or, or a car salesman. You don't take in – you don't go to a car salesman. And he's like, are you sure you really want to trade this in? I mean, what if your husband wants a different car? Yeah. What if, what if, exactly. what if you decide? There is no other job that's like that. Yeah. No. What if, what if six months from now you decide that you really miss this car 
and that you wish that you could have it back, but by then it's already sold. Yep. It's going to be really hard to go back and get that from somebody else. Mm-hmm. Instead of just like, fuck you, give me your money. Yeah. Yeah, it's yep. it's. I don't think it's. I think it's wrong of doctors to insert themselves. Yeah. Me. Sure, maybe have a discussion. Make sure it's what they actually want. That they've thought about it. Whatever, just to make sure that you're not doing something that they would later come back to you and go, and sue you as the doctor yeah. for not giving them an, any advice or or other options right. or or giving them some time well, to think about it. Certainly, but if they make the decision, if they let it let it be known that they've thought about it for a long time, it's their decision, and you as their medical provider should do it. But they have no problem replacing your body parts with with a uh, plastic bits and saline or whatever you know for plastic surgery and stuff mm-hmm. but as soon as it comes to reproductive stuff it's like ooh hold on i know we've i know we turned you into a plastic person but you really need to keep the junk down there untouched yeah well and what sucks is that you can have a great doctor who you agree with on everything else and they provide great care. But then you hit that one thing, right? It's the same thing that we run into people. It's the same thing that we run into with people who we're friends with or family members with who you can agree with them on 99% of everything else, but they find out you're an atheist and that changes everything for some reason. It's that one thing that makes all the difference to some people. Which to us, it doesn't make a difference at all. No. No, I just don't believe you believe. I can tell you go get fucked sometimes, but <laughs> I can tell you I think what you believe is silly, but we can still be friends. That's fine. Yeah. Um, go take a hike on Aussie Road. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh. Uh, we also got feedback <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from Mr. Daniel Morris of the Two Skeptical Chaps. Hello, Dan. Podcast. Podcast. It says, he wrote, uh, he actually just posted it on our Facebook page and says, enjoying your episode 146. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love when you guys do accents, really. Accents. I like the protest to prayer. Amen. Now get on with it. <laughs> Reminded me of a tactic my dad uses sometimes fast to say grace. Good God, let's eat. <laughs> but, uh. Aw, Dan likes when we do accents. <laughs> Well, I think because That's how we they mentioned say it in Britain, isn't it? I think accent, I think actually you accent. Matt mentioned while we were recording the last episode that we thank you. I think you did an Australian accent, and you're like, oh, yeah. they probably make fun of us, or they think it's true uh, yeah, when we yeah, do yeah, accents yeah. anyway. Yeah, don't because we're terrible at them. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I can do some good ones, but they're racially insensitive. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's hear your ebonics. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We also heard from Vasilis Graves, who said, you guys rock. Cypress. Yeah. Haven't heard that for a while. (laughs) The sound is stellar coming. uh, Or he says, the sound is stellar. This coming from a professional studio sound engineer. You keep me entertained, engaged, and informed. The guests, with one pretty glaring exception. Who was that? (laughs) I didn't know. (laughs) Are equally brilliant. Oh, good. As I told you ages ago, you make me feel like I'm still connected from the other side of the planet. Pretty much every week I check the website obsessively for the new episode and can count on one hand the times I did not download before you tell us it's available here on Facebook. If and when I get back to Utah, I will gladly buy you all, recurring guests too, a round of one of the IPAs you make me wish were here. (laughs) Oh, how generous. Okay, I'll stop gushing. Note, I am totally sober and have not even finished my first cup of coffee yet, for now. (laughs) Thank you very much, Vasilis. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be it's awesome. Always nice to hear from you. To be able to hang out and chat. Totally. We should do a we should do a, a remote thing sometime somewhere. Yeah. Cyprus? No, I would, <laughs> I, nice I would love trip. to go to Cyprus, man. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh hell yeah. I would place like this is fucking gorgeous. Well, it'd be just fucking cool to go somewhere else and yeah. re- record live and we did yeah, we did it once like and... right off the bat. Oh shit, yeah, that was yeah. so early on. Shit, yeah, that was like, like within our like first 10. Yeah, that was within our first 20 episodes, I think. Was it? Really? Yeah, yeah we, I'm pretty sure. Wow. We were hot shit. <laughs> when we were like isn't this the thing that they do? They do? Yeah, they... People do this all the time, right? They're like this is a headache. <laughs> it was kind of a pain. Well, it was a pain just getting a spot somewhere yeah. mm-hmm. more than anything else. We're going to take it, and we're going to take it hard, and we're going to take it strong, and I will work with overwhelming force. Everything in the butt. Hey. So we mentioned earlier. 
Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. What did we mention earlier? Segway. Yes. Uh-huh. Natural segue. We're talking about orphans and adoption. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Religion and shit like that. And recently, a mass grave was found at a former Catholic orphanage in Ireland. Hmm. Imagine uh, that. I no, wonder no what Ireland. would be in this mass grave in Ireland. It wasn't automobiles. No? No. Was it goldfish? It was the remains of babies and young children. Ah. Apparently 800, just, approximately. Yeah, just a few. Children oh, I thought who they did like the abortions. Facility, facility, what the fuck? They don't, they don't. This was published in the LA Times on March 3rd. It says a mass grave containing the remains of babies and young children has been discovered at a former Catholic orv- orphanage in Ireland. <laughs> Government appointed investigation announced Friday and the findings that confirmed a local historian efforts to trace the fate of 800 children who perished at the facility. I think you mean facility. Facility. lady. Felicity. Do you realize that Ryan just took over reading for you and did a better <laughs> job? I did. And I'm like, I'm just going to watch. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. The judge led Mothers and Babies Homes Commission announced Friday that excavation at the site in the former. Bond, I'm going to fuck that word up. It's bon, bon secure. Yeah, exactly. Bon, yep. Yeah, it's fucking, it's French in Ireland. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> De Ireland. All right, you take over, Dan. I'm, I'm not one word fuck uh, up. <laughs> At the Bon Secure Mother and Baby Home in Tuong County, Galway, I found an underground structure divided into 20 chambers containing significant quantities of human remains. Hmm. That sounds okay. like legal speak. So, chambers, like it was a... Uh, an actual like room under the ground? Probably not Sounds broom so much, but probably just compartmentalized. I mean, they didn't because they didn't bury eight hundred people all at the same time. No, I just so. wonder if it was like, oh, we filled that that bricked up room. Now let's build mm. another bricked up room to fill with babies. Like a catacomb. It's getting the smell. Yeah, yeah, like just a catacomb type stack thing. Stack them, yeah. stacking yeah. the bodies. Yeah, until probably. They can't fit you don't want to dig a there. new hole each time. <laughs> no, what a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. The commission said DNA analysis of selected remains confirmed the ages of the dead ranged from 35 weeks to three years old and were buried chiefly in the 1950s when the facility was one of more than a dozen in Ireland offering shelter to orphans, unwed mothers, and their children. It closed in 1961. Hmm. The announcement confirms decades of suspicions that the vast majority of children who died at the home were interred on the site in unmarked graves, a relatively common practice at such Catholic-run facilities amid high child mortality rates in early 20th century Ireland. Ireland. Hmm. Because but, God didn't care about these unwanted yeah. babies well, also, and children, he, toddlers he, at up to three years old. He cares so fucking much about abortion. But yet, if you have the baby and the Catholic Church kills the goddamn thing, they can just chuck it in a hole. Well, and that's fine. As long as it's already been born, yeah. that's fine. They yeah. need they need the satisfaction of killing it themselves. Once it's separated uh, from the mother's womb, then it's, it's on its own. It's fair game. I yep. mean, if the mother doesn't choose to care for it, then you just throw it in a hole. It's, it's like Are you a Protestant baby or a Catholic hole, baby? Ooh. You get out of one hole. If you're cared yeah. for, you're fine. If not, you get out of one hole and you're just thrown in another. It's like big, it's like big game hunting. <laughs> you're, it's really not a good practice to shoot a a pregnant elk or something. They want sure, them to have sure. the elk for one man. Then to have the elk be on its own before you kill mom hmm. or the baby. It's two for one. Okay. Well, I don't hunt either, so. No, that's just one of the bills they're trying to get passed through now. That you can't kill a. No, pregnant- that you can. Oh, that you can. Yeah, of course. Why not? Well, how would you know? Like if you get if because you get they're only a, pregnant during certain times of the year, and those are the times of the year when you're not allowed to hunt. Oh, uh, hmm. hmm. you you can kill Bambi's mom though, and that's fine as soon as they're as, as soon, soon as they're as born. Soon, this well, is a part of elk husbandry I did not know. Well, about. it's it's for uh, most husband. wildlife. They want to change the laws for it. That's what one of the bills they got put. So up you can just the wipe them stuff. all out. Just yeah. So oh, just to, this, is, this allows them to go into the refuges, uh, the uh, wildland refugee. Refuges, Refug- not refugees. <laughs> I fuck that one up all the time. The, f- uh, the wildlife Fujis. Re- the, yeah, the, <laughs> into the Fujis and uh, uh, kill a pregnant. Killing me sow, softly with that or sow, yeah. One that has young ones with them, which in those uh, refuges, refuges, 
is illegal right now to do that. I mean, you know, to be honest, it has been taking quite a long time to get these huntable, populations, these huntable species extinct. So it has. We, we ought we ought to pass laws like that to just get rid you know, of them three, quicker, f- like, three, four years and be done yeah, with done with it, like we were doing with the buffalo. Yeah, bring that back. I think you mean Tatanka. Hey, that's pretty racist. <laughs> no, it's not. That was a pretty awesome Indian accent, though, Dan. No. <laughs> I think you mean Tatanka, Ryan. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about the toys. No. What? Tonka toys. No, Tatanka. I know. <laughs> buffalo. I'm just trying to make it seem weird. The buffalo, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> the sacred animal. <laughs> They're pretty badass animals. Yeah, they are. The story continues and says the government in 2014 oh, shit, <laughs> formed formed the investigation following the work of a local Tuam historian, Catherine Corliss. Catherine Corliss. <laughs> that works better. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> who found certificates for nearly 800 children who are residents at the facility. But a burial record for only one child. Child. <laughs> They're like in way northern Ireland, almost in Scotland. <laughs> child. Your lucky charms. <laughs> Everything pointed to this area being a mass grave, said Corliss, who recalled how local boys playing in the field had reported seeing a pile of bones in a hidden underground chamber there in the mid-1970s. Wow. Along with oh. hearts, diamonds, and moons, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Green lucky charms. <laughs> So they, they found they found a pile of bones in the mid seventies, and we're like, eh, "It's probably fine. It's nothing. It's probably nothing. We'll wait another forty years." Yeah. <laughs> the government's commissioner for children, Catherine Zapone, said Friday's findings were sad and disturbing, <laughs> and pledged that the children's descendants would be consulted on providing proper burials and other more mo- other memorials. You must we will honor Mormons. their memory and make sure that we take the right actions now to treat their <laughs> remains appropriately. That is so did, Scottish now. Did you it's say that we right will honor Scottish. their memories? I'm Scots Irish. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's, it just happens that way. The perfect orange man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a good thing that we could laugh through <clears throat> such a terrible <laughs> fucking story. Oh, <laughs> shit. What was it about? Um, kids. <laughs> oh, dead, dead kids. Fucking oh, yeah. Catholic Church and kids, you know, hiding the bodies. <sighs> they're, they're always inappropriate when it comes to things like that. Chambers. I'm hungry for cereal, though. You. That's what America is about. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That was perfect. America is about cereal it's and being totally hungry for it. For Lucky Charms, racist cereals. Yeah, autoplay wins. Ben, ben gave us the perfect segue. <laughs> You've probably all heard of this by now, uh, but if not, you should. So we're going to repeat it again. Ben, ben fucking Carson, Carson thinks is back. that thinks that slaves from Africa who were, we're transported in the bottom of sh- cargo ships. Came here as immigrants. They're, they're, they're looking for a better life. Yeah. Let's hear what else he has to say on the autoplay. A land of dreams and opportunity. There were other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less. But or nothing. How, yeah, yeah. How can you work for less than nothing? Or, or to avoid whips. Uh, it's, that's less, I guess. Okay. Less whips. Okay. Yeah. And a, and a hot r- room to sleep in, or a warm room, so they don't sit out in the cold in a shack. Oh, uh, sure. Well, I guess the South wasn't very cold. No. But they sure. too had a dream. Uh, they too had a dream. That one day their sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, great grandsons, great granddaughters might pursue prosperity and happiness in this land no they probably just hope their son would be able to kill that white slave owner maybe that they maybe they had a dream that they weren't fucking slaves (laughs) that they weren't kidnapped from their that they could come and go as they wanted that they would earn a living that they could have their own fucking property that they weren't treated as property and sold as property jesus christ when I heard this, I was like, you got to be shitting me. Like, he, he said, what? Like, Ben Carson is a dumb motherfucker, yeah, but yeah. I didn't think he was that dumb. And then I heard it, and I was like, oh, uh, I guess my view of him has to get even lower. Well, he did say Obamacare was the worst legislation. The worst thing to happen slavery. since yeah. slavery, yeah. Yeah, I, I was still shocked, though, when I heard that. But yeah, I mean, in 2003, Carson called Obamacare the worst thing that has happened in this nation since slavery. And it is, in a way, it is slavery in a way 
because it is making all of us subservient to the government. And it was never about health care. It was about control. Uh, which? Oh. No. No. Everything about that, no. That's a big fat fucking nope. Every human being, regardless of their ethnicities or their background, they have a brain, the human brain. Except well, you, Dr. Carson. Yeah, he took, I think he was the one that in school, when they were practicing for their, uh, their neurosurgeon stuff, they took his out. <laughs> you can't overload the brain. Have you ever heard people say, don't do that or you'll overload your brain? You can't overload the human brain. So we need to concentrate a little less on what we can't do and a little more on what we can do. What the fuck was he trying to... We're going to have to get like uh, one of those uh, ben Egyptologists Sleepy Time in here to decrypt this. Yeah. Ben Sleepy Time Carson with a whole bunch of bullshit. Yeah. There's a guy in... Uh, in a city. Virginia who threatened to kill the president when that president was a black man named Obama. Ooh. And now he's going to run for a seat in Virginia in in the politi- in the politics. Politics. And he wants to ban women voters. Ah. <clears throat> Cuz that's the thing you do. You I mean, if you're a white man from Virginia who threatened to kill the previous president Obama who was black man. He well, probably is one of those people that asks, why isn't there a men's day? Yeah. Oh, I bet he is. Yep. And why isn't there a white pride day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's probably one of those people. White history month. Why isn't there, why isn't there the wet channel? The white entertainment? Oh, I was like, wet channel? Isn't that like. Like BET? Yeah. No, I was It'd just trying to, think of, a, think of a, I was trying to think of a porn channel name <laughs> for the wet channel. <laughs> But why do you think America is a Christian nation? That was the creator of everything. They are Christian beliefs to be the foundation of our lives. And I believe God isn't done with America. And that's the Lord we know. But this guy spent 16 months in jail. <laughs> well, <laughs> man, we are all over the place. All over are. the place, man. Jumping everywhere. We're taking every ride tonight. Huge leaps <laughs> all over the place. Leaps and bounds. This guy apparently spent- We are taking huge leaps all over the place. 16 months in jail. 16 months in jail, Ryan. Okay. <clears throat> Not long even, enough. I don't even remember this. I don't know if it made a whole lot of news back when it happened, but this was in 2009 that he threatened to kill President Barack Obama. So first year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In 2009, uh, this guy- Nathan Daniel Larson sent Secret Service an email. <laughs> if you're going to fucking oh try to my. kill the president, don't tell the Secret Service, you <laughs> dipshit. Yeah, their only job. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm challenging your only job. <laughs> hey, uh, just thought I'd drop you guys a little, little you know, FYI, I want to uh, I to kill the president. I've got got my rifle. and You I guys are closest to him, so I figured it'd be best to warn you ahead of time. Yeah. I don't want to kill you. what I'm planning just, to do. Just move out of the way. <laughs> uh, as a result of being convicted of a felony, Larson lost his voting rights, which Virginia lists as a requirement for running for office. But his rights were restored by Governor Terry McAuliffe <sighs> after this guy was released from prison. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, this, this is a white guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he has a felony. Yeah, and they say that those the felony uh, thing that excludes you from being able to vote is not a racial issue. However, this guy happened to get a pardon on that particular thing, so that he can still vote, right? Or was released from that? Yeah, yeah. So, hmm, doesn't do much to bolster the case that it isn't a race issue. What makes it even more shitty? Is that even though Larson threatened to kill the president, spent, what was it, 16, 16 months in jail, months. and originally was not able to vote were it not for Governor Terry McAuliffe, Larson is running on a platform where he states that he does not think that women should have the right to vote. He also believes that fathers should be able to marry their daughters. What the ever-loving fuck? Virginia sounds like an exciting place. It's a place ah. for lovers. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> That's what They're already when, allowed to fuck their pigs. That's what I thought initially. I was like, Virginia's a place for lovers. It's uh-huh. an exciting place. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> nice. 
the Libertarian Party of Virginia is who he's running is the party with which he is running. How for. would you say that? He he's running he's <laughs> running on the Libertarian Party ticket. Yes. He's a libertarian. Yes. <laughs> all of those, that, that would all be, of those ways work, yes. That would be correct. <laughs> which one is less clear? He's a libertarian, <clears throat> but the libertarians don't want him on their ticket <laughs> anymore. <laughs> apparently <laughs> apparently this guy's just a little bit too far for the libertarians there in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Fucking Yeah. Yeah, he's he's heavy libertarian. So I think women want male leadership, and so men have to be strong, Larson explained. Men have to take the stance they believe are right, and women will respect that. By (laughs) emailing the Secret Service about our plans for assassinating the president. And making sure that they women, that they, the women, can't vote. <laughs> I bet, that I they bet women. that they women can't vote. I bet he goes on patrol around <laughs> town. To which Libertarian Party uh, voting for part of the- I'm really tired tonight. Did I mention that before we started recording? Well, no. I'm super tired. Long, I'm, a, I'm also a little punchy tonight, I think. Long well, days in I'm the usually office. super- You got in, a shriveled dick photo. <laughs> I know. I'm usually so intense, but tonight I'm just like, eh. It's, it was, it's been a long week at work already. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, see what the local got... news has to say about this guy. All right. He looks Hitler-esque. Oh, he threatened to kill President Obama, and now he is running for delegate. A Virginia man has enough signatures in at least one oh, county to get the on signatures? the ballot. Oh, but he doesn't even want women to vote. That's not even the most controversial part of his campaign. WUS. This is two women. two women reporters, and they're both like, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say 9's Mike Valerio introduces us to a candidate from Northern Virginia who may soon be making headlines here and around the country. Well, bottom line, somebody who thinks that women shouldn't be allowed to vote is running for delegate here in Prince William, and he thinks that he has a shot. His name was front and center when he emailed the Secret Service saying he would kill President Obama. A judge sentenced him to 16 months, and now Nathan Larson is out. He says it was all an act of civil disobedience. And now he wants to run for delegate. His main campaign plan. It's, it's an act of civil disobedience to threaten the life of the president. That's no, it's murder. Well, it's it's. He a, wants to run for it's delegate. A threat. His main. I, I don't think that's an act of. I don't think he understands what an act of civil disobedience no. is. Campaign platform in one sentence. I think women want male leadership. And so men have to be strong. He has enough signatures to be on the ballot. Oh, my God. That guy does not even have anywhere near the voice projection or confidence to run for political office. He, he, well, he, he wouldn't yeah. even be able to run an interesting podcast. He spent 16 <laughs> months in jail uh, getting raped. And that's a low bar. I think, yeah. I, I, th- I think that women want someone to be strong and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, leadership. Right. It seems, it seems odd that he would make that assertion that women want a strong man to make yeah. the decisions for them when clearly he's not the guy to do that. Right. Right. And his it's- handwriting is awesome. <laughs> also. Fuck here. Prince William's signatures are being verified. He has a campaign pledge to subjugate women if he makes it to Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. sounds dirty. Wow. <laughs> he just doesn't even he doesn't even try to hide it. He's No. What's worse though is that he gathered enough signatures to get on yeah. the fucking ballot. I wonder if they here's, knew here's about the that thing, when though. they signed that thing. <laughs> this is just like the rise of Trump though. You know, Trump came along and said all of the things Republicans believe in and do, but no, they won't get support for if they say it. So they couch yeah. it in this sneaky, weaselly, strongholdy language. And, and Trump came along and just said it outright. And mm-hmm. then they're like, oh, we got to distance ourselves from this guy. Same with this guy. He's like, well, I plan to subjugate women. And they're like, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. hundred people are like, sure. And the rest of them are like, that sounds like a swell idea. Yeah, and the whole other, the Libertarian Party's like, well, we need distance from this guy. He's saying what we do. Or they're just like, <laughs> what does subjugate mean? Yeah, well, maybe that too, yeah. <laughs> sounds good. It's a long one. The longer ones, <laughs> they're they're the good I ones. I didn't say I was going to subjugate women. I just <laughs> want to keep them in their place. Right. But we asked, will women Underneath actually me. vote for him? I think so. You think so? 
because I, I think what we're doing now isn't working. But of course, there are plenty of women who influence the world of politics. So we asked for his thoughts on just a few of them. Ivanka Trump, thoughts? Um, I don't really have any strong opinions about her. Nikki Haley? She's, she's fine as far as I know. I mean, Condoleezza Rice. Should she have been given the responsibilities to be Secretary of State? Uh, I, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> he I don't think he much. knows. I don't think he knows who, who any are. of those people no. are. Honestly, I think he's that clueless. Yeah. I think he was just thinking dirty thoughts about Ivanka Trump when he was pausing. <laughs> no, I think he doesn't even know no who, who they she are. is. Yeah. Larson wants to run as a libertarian, but the state party told us today they want to expel him. Larson says he'll run anyway. If you're independent, it just means that you're, you're the one. Nobody supports you. Uh, running an experimental campaign, you, sometimes it may mean you're ahead of your time. And that vote oh, on ahead of your time. He's... This is an ancient practice <laughs> of subjugating women. We've gotten beyond it. Guys, I have this. I have this totally new concept. No, just 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 hear me out. Okay. So, you know women, right? Yeah, I know a few. They're they're the they're they're the they're the they're the people around who, the kitchen, right? Who who do other things? Yeah, but they don't. You know, they don't work at the rock quarry. And no, they, no. Don't, they don't do all the hunting no, and they, the they, gathering. They ain't in the mines. And you know, they're the ones who stay home with the youngins. Yeah, yep, yep. So I got this idea. Okay, just hear me out. I'm listening, Bob. I think maybe they shouldn't be able to make any decisions about shit. Well, I've been saying that for fucking twenty years. I think, I think maybe they shouldn't even. They shouldn't be allowed to vote on things because, I mean, it, clearly they're not going to make any decisions of a real consequence anyway. No, they just watch Oprah. So we can't entrust our government to them. Uh-uh. As a libertarian, I feel like the government should be small anyway. So if we can cut out half the population from even voting for the government, it should be smaller that way anyway, right? Yeah, well, well, everyone picks for themselves. Libertarianism. I say hell good goddamn. Except that sounds women. fucking perfect because that if you get rid of half right away, that makes it smaller right away. Everybody knows libertarians is where it's at. But, I mean, they're the smart ones, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. Now, now Jimmy Dean, what is a fucking libertarian? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Dean. The, li the, liber the libertarians, the days of Martins. Okay. You ain't no, you ain't no goddamn Republican. Is this your demon. Irish accent? I'm confused. <laughs> no, we're just trying to be a, a gruffly voiced man that likes to watch people pick cotton. But I mean, if, oh, if they can, you know, they do and love sausage. They, as the LDS church says, yes. you know, I, I, ain't, I ain't no damn Mormon, but I agree with them on some things. I mean, women, well, multiple women, women can't hold important duties within certain things but they have other important duties i mean i'm not saying i hate women or that i think women ain't important i just think they have special duties reserved well, for them they need to they need to stick to them if we can do the them duties they that's what they you, need to stick if to. we can do them they're subjugating and then we can get the mormon thing working that means i can get two or three women to be subjugating because my one woman ain't cleaning the house very well no more these days well, so that means I can get two or three women subjugating in the house. Hmm. Well, I, I just think I just think it's a very novel, new idea that is really going to catch oh, yeah, fire. Yeah. Ain't nobody ever thought of this before. Never. I mean, women have always been able to vote. Yep. They've always had all kinds of power. Yep. It's about time we stripped that from them. I mean, that last woman president went. She 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 screwed this whole country. I mean, you've seen how bad those women presidents can be. Yes. With all the women presidents that we've had, what good has any woman president ever done for this country? Not one good at all. I just have one question. What is your improv team name? Um, <laughs> mm, wank and Spank? Wank and Spank? Wank and Spank. Did okay. you say wink or wank? Wank. I just keep sure. seeing pictures of shriveled up sticks. <laughs> uh, that, looks right. like, that looks like E.T., <laughs> well, in that, uh, that should be sitting in Elliot's basket on the front of his bike. Uh, Matt's see. drawing dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but I had earlier today a libertarian block me on Facebook, and it was just adorable. Uh, just adorable. Libertarians are adorable. Like a puppy? In the way that they 
have these simplistic views that they don't examine thoroughly. They don't really give a whole lot of thought. They don't, they don't follow the logic trail of, of how the things that they believe would ultimately play out in the real world, right? It's like, it's like a little kid playing with his GI Joes and he just doesn't understand the consequences of the things that he would like to do. Yeah. And how they want the government to work or not work as, as the case may be for several libertarians who would wish to abolish it. I, I understand and can get behind some lines of libertarian thought. I've said this before, but to, to say that I'm a libertarian is something that I would have only said until maybe I was 15 or 16. And then you then learn would, a little bit more about politics and civics, American government, yeah. history, life in general. Shit that has worked and shit that hasn't and, worked. And decide that, yeah, that's not going to, that's not going to work. You know, you, you get the libertarians who say, well, you know, it's just, we, we have too much government and too much oversight, too many regulations, too many, too much of this, that bureaucracy, capitalism is the way to go. And if companies aren't going to do something right, then it's up to the people who buy from those companies to keep those companies in check because that's worked ever. No. Yeah. We, we've never seen companies who don't give a fuck about anything else besides profit. That's most of them. And then use that profit to keep other people at bay. So the government had to step in yep. and enforce regulations, put regulations in place to force these companies to do the things that they should have been doing anyway, to protect the people from these companies. Are we sure Trump's not? It's just fucking short sighted and completely ignorant of human history. Yeah. I mean, all, all that shit, our, our unions, our, our safe work practices and stuff, we all stepped in to fix stuff because these companies were had shitty work practices saying, well, you can't force kids to go in there and, and grease cogs in a giant piece of machinery because it's it's not safe. Yeah. Well, no, like using kids to, to do really dangerous work because grease they could cogs. fit Because they have tiny Sounds. hands and can get in there. Well, and they could fit in the machinery. Not unlike our president. Yeah. But their little hands can get in there he and could, work things. He could be a cog greaser. Grab or, him by uh, the cogs. Or I have or, noticed or being that. forced to actually pay employees for the hours they work. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I haven't been able to connect a coax cable in 15 years. Oh. The, those countersink holes that they yeah. put for those, like fucking, you got to have toothpick fingers to be able to get those <laughs> things in there. If we have any libertarian <laughs> listeners, <laughs> you should um, you should contact us and let us know why I'm wrong. <laughs> Matt's kicked out of the improv. Group. I know. I'm just. I would. I, I would love to argue on. the finer points of libertarianism and politics with you, because if I'm wrong about libertarian ideals and the libertarian party platform, such as it may be, non-existent really, I would like to know. Let me know what I'm missing that that should make me a libertarian, because they seem to be growing in popularity, or at least the among a lot of the. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? Ring, yeah, ring. I hear a phone. Hey, Dan. Hello? This is Tim. <laughs> and I am totally libertarian, man. Why are you a libertarian, Tim? Because I'm just so fed up with stuff, right? You know, man? Like, what stuff are you fed up with? Like the government and stuff. Dude, I was a total Bernie guy, man, you know? Uh-huh. And then I had to vote for Trump, you know? Because, <laughs> like, I'm so desperate, dude. Do you think that Trump's Trump's policies and beliefs about how the government should be ran are any way aligned with those of Bernie Sanders? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no, that was a question. <laughs> no, but if I'm wrong about libertarianism, let me know. You can call us at 330-81-REBEL, or you can send us an email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com. Or you can send us a message through our Facebook page or post out on our Facebook page and let me know why I'm wrong. Until then, I will just continue to think that libertarians are adorable and misguided. Lord, is it so much to ask that you not let us suddenly burst into flame for no apparent reason? I mean, come on. Amen. Well, you said you had a thing, Matt. I didn't get these fully edited the way i usually do so this uh, might be a kind of a disaster to try to go through yeah there's my... still some handwritten notes on these you yeah. didn't retype them out or anything I, I know didn't have time this week so uh bear with me everybody again i've asked that a couple times now 
I'm going to bear down on you. <laughs> In honor of Women's Day, and as a follow-up to a story I pulled a couple weeks ago involving the sexist religious posters at Langley, here's the result from my buddy, Todd Starnes. Oh, Todd. I you hate that guy. I really do. The Air Force has removed several faith-based posters from a display at Langley Air Force Base to appease a group of hysterical feminists who got their pantyhose in a twist over what they called sexist male supremacist language. So you you talked about this story before. Yeah, this is the follow-up. Okay. And Todd is doing- Did you say that already? Did you say this was a follow-up? Yeah, twice. Yeah. Sorry. And Todd is doing a great job of showing he's totally incapable of understanding what sexist language is. Did I mention that I was tired? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Please continue. Uh, Before we go any further, Starn says, it's important to understand. It's important to understand this piece, according to Todd Starnes. Okay, I'm paying attention. That the offending passage on the poster was first published in a 1955 Air Force Manual. We clearly have historical precedent, so you women need to just shut the fuck up. Yep. 1955, when sexism didn't exist. Wait. (laughs) Okay, continue. (laughs) Mm. Because it was published during some of our most sexist times, it's perfectly fine now. Yeah, unless he's trying to set up an argument from tradition, which is also fallacious. Yeah. Uh, The quote goes as follows. Men cannot live without faith except for brief moments of anarchy or despair. Uh, Faith leads to conviction, and convictions lead to actions. It is only a man of deep convictions, a man of deep faith, who will make the sacrifices needed to save his manhood. It Uh, is obvious that our enemy will attack us at our weakest spot. If my balls balls are in danger, if my my manhood is in trouble, I will defend it with my (laughs) fucking life. The hole in our armor is our lack of faith. Oh, fuck this guy. We need to revive a fighting faith by which we can live and for which we would be willing to even die. It sounds like the weakness in his armor is not having a codpiece. But I mean, is everything okay with that quote so far with you guys? No. As, especially since it was made before women were, were serving in the military? No, I no. can't think of anything that's right or okay with that quote. Right. Uh Starnes also says that the words the nas- the words the National Organization for Women found most egregious were man, men, and manhood. Um, uh, is he is he just saying that that's what they found most egregious, or that's what they said they found most egregious? I don't know. That's just what Starnes said. So I, I that's why I added that. I don't know where he's getting that from. But huh. um, Terry O'Neill, uh, the now president wrote in a letter, quote, this, the passages glorify the military's reliance on male dominance, stating without equivocation that it is only a man of deep convictions, a man of deep faith, who will make the sacrifices needed to save his manhood, <clears throat> which was the opposition to having the poster remain hung. Um, oh, remain and, hung. <laughs> <laughs> and also said, what does that send, what message does that send to young women who currently serve or want to serve in the military? What do we say to the women... What do you say to women in your command who make the same sacrifices to protect the country as do men? Is the purpose of the U.S. Armed Forces really to assist only men to make sacrifices necessary to save their manhood? And only those of faith. Right. And those, those as well. Yeah. Uh, the Military Religious Freedom Foundation fired the first shot on the faith-based poster demanding it be removed because it was an endorsement of religion, which is why I brought the piece in the first place to yeah. the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Air Force dismissed the MRFF's concerns, and that's when the feminists got involved, uh, saying, quote, o- O'Neill saying, saying this again, the, the, this offensive propaganda must not be allowed to continue on display at ACC headquarters. Uh, the Air Force. That's Air Combat Command. Yes. You're welcome. Okay. Yes. Not an acronym. Uh, <laughs> unless they call it the uh. ACK. Um, uh, Todd displays more of his vast understanding of feminism by stating that the Air Force uh, surrendered to the feminists faster than you could put on a pair of Birkenstocks. Mm. I fucking hate this guy. I know why you hate him, because yeah. I'm hating him more all the time. Mm-hmm. 
uh, an Air Force spokesperson. And yes, Todd used spokesperson here. Not spokesman. No, he uh, didn't. Hmm. An Air Force spokesperson said, uh, quote, with additional time to review all seven posters outside the narrower, primarily religious context of the original complaint about two of them, we concluded the, the gendered language used in the display interfered with intended messages about personal integrity. The posters, which had been on display for at least six years, have been removed. Okay. Uh, Starnes says that uh, it's time for the Trump administration to crack down on the man-haters and Jesus-haters oh. that have infested the greatest fighting force on the planet. Oh, my God. Why? So... I, w I just want to take a moment to point out, I don't yes. know if you do it later in this, but I want to take a moment to point out that intersectionality is important and working with allies is important. You said earlier that the military, when the MRFF went to them with their concerns about it pushing a Christian narrative or a religious narrative in these, they were just like, meh, no big deal. But then you get the feminists involved and now it's a big deal. Yeah, right. Yep. Um. And it's worth noting that it may not be Trump who does this, but the thieves on the right that seat Gorsuch, mm. uh, Todd may get his wish about this. Mm. Uh, the Military Religious Freedom Foundation once bragged, according to Starnes, about having a hotline to the Pentagon. Well, it's time for Defense Secretary Mad Dog Mattis to disconnect the number. We can always count on uh, Starnes for some real tough talk from behind his computer screen. And the o oh, the overly sensitive Starns opines that the overly sensitive women uh, are saying that the, the they need to ease up on the politically correct hysterics, uh. <laughs> and and closes with another compliment in compassion by saying it's time to man up, ladies. Ooh. Oh my god! I would like to punch <laughs> Todd Starns. He's such a fucking nerd too have you seen this guy okay I, w I didn't even include this in my piece but i'm doing it now i <laughs> know it. most of Do our it. listeners are gonna be nerdy we're all atheists we got this but this guy's I'm a nerdy. fucking geek yeah dude and he's talking all this shit i'm nerd i want to pull up a picture of Todd. this little bitch has fun. never won a fight in his life and he's talking all this shit fuck this guy Judge Dar oh my god yeah everyone look him up his cheek goes directly to his chest. He has no chin whatsoever. He has never even won a game of D&D. &D. Wow. I think this guy is just taking out his frustration on the about, that he can't about get like laid. never having a date. Yeah. Todd Starnes, everybody. What an asshole. Uh, I fucking hate this guy. He's probably bought a wife by now. Yeah. He looks like a potato with glasses. <laughs> it does. Ooh, was he the original model for the Potato Man? He also looks like Michael Moore enough that there's a Michael Moore picture <laughs> mixed in with the Todd Starnes pictures. <laughs> in, in fact, we do have some British listeners, so I think it's Potato. Oh, right. Potato uh, Starnes. I think you mean Potato. No, but it's Todd. Potato. Potato? Potato. Uh, hmm. Never mind. Because it's Todd oh, Starnes, Jesus. Potato. I told you are I was you tired. Sleepy? I told Dad, you I was you tired. Sleepy? I told you I was tired, man. I'm not going to catch some of the shit this easily. I bet even our British guests. Uh, British uh, guests? Oh, yes. yeah. You're welcome anytime. You said you were tired also. So sure. we'll let that one slide. Yeah, I didn't nap today. <laughs> uh, I didn't nap today. <laughs> well, I normally take naps. You do? Yeah. I Fuck, it's my work schedule. I nap. I can't nap, man. I nap occasionally. Sometimes I have no choice. <laughs> like I'll just be, <laughs> I'll be working on something, then. and then ten minutes later, I pick my head up and realize, oh my god, I fell asleep. <laughs> I was just sleeping right now. I woke myself up because I snored loud. Have you guys ever done that in public? Just fallen asleep in public? No. Well, <laughs> I think I've gone to sleep in public. I can't tell you how many times I have fallen asleep in public, like at a doctor's office in the waiting room. Or in a movie theater. <laughs> do, or do airplanes count? On the toilet in the restroom. <laughs> Never fallen asleep. <laughs> Just fucking falling asleep. And then I'll wake myself up because I do this thing sometimes when, most of the time when I'm falling asleep where 
just as I'm falling asleep, like that transition from consciousness to to being asleep, I'll make a noise like, <laughs> like, like, like you're dying, like all the air is escaping your body. <laughs> That's what it's like. Do you guys do that? Do you make a noise when you fall asleep? No, um, I just no. kind of uh, fall asleep. I totally do. I'll I and I do it more often than not. That just as I'm, it's it's that transition. Just as you're actually falling asleep, I'll make a noise, and it's always it's always this like strained grunt kind of thing, like. A, I've, I've like leapt out of chairs while sleeping. Oh well, yeah, that, I think we all. Where you, that where you jolt, yeah, yeah that yeah. jump. Yeah, I, oh, I had yeah. a guy at work that threw a, a computer mouse across the room. Oh yeah, he had his, his laptop out on his lap, sitting in a recliner, and he fell asleep with his hand on the wireless mouse. Uh-huh. And when he woke up, his arm flung, and he threw the <laughs> he threw the mouse against the wall. He's like, oh. <laughs> I think I broke it. <laughs> no, I don't have that like uh, hole in the whoopee cushion effect thing. <laughs> no. But I do have the dream scream when I when I'm having like nightmares and stuff. Oh yeah, I have. So there there's a chemical in your brain that when you fall asleep is released to basically paralyze you. Right, mm-hmm. so you don't move around a whole lot in your sleep. You don't flail. I doubt that. My blankets are always like reverse when I wake up. I'm like, wait, I just went to bed with that one on top. And <laughs> and mm-hmm. and different people have different amounts or levels of that chemical that is released when you fall asleep. I'm one of the people who doesn't have enough of that. People who have too much of it, a lot of time will have like the uh, night terrors. night terrors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, night terrors when when they, they can't wake up. Yeah, when they're horrible. basically awake, but they have uh, they're they're paralyzed, but they yeah. have waking visions mm-hmm. of you know some massive black cloud kind of thing falling down. I mean, that's that's where a lot of ghost stories yeah. come from: poltergeists, demons. hauntings, demons, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and those are people who develop too much of that chemical while they're asleep. And then there are people like me. Who don't develop enough of it? Who thrash a lot while they sleep? Uh like I'll almost every night kick crazy. You know, it's it's people like me who don't develop enough of it. Who <laughs> the greatest crime fighter who ever lived? <laughs> kick, talk, kick Tracy. Who talk a lot in their sleep? Who who talk, laugh, yell, thrash? Like I, I'll punch the wall and kick and. Hmm. Do all kinds of ninja moves as I'm fighting off the bad guys in my dreams, all of that kind of shit. Because I don't, I don't produce enough of that chemical. Apparently, hmm. my mom would talk when she's sleeping. Oh yeah, she'd fall asleep in a chair, and we'd be looking over like, "Oh, she's sleeping. What's she? Ta- what, what's she saying? <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna say she doesn't, but my dad will back me up on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I talk in my sleep a whole lot more than anything, though. I laugh in my sleep. Like I just, yeah, I giggle my ass off, and Tracy thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you, you and Danielle are both very pleasant people, and she does that too. Oh yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I like have dreams where you know where you feel like you're trying to wa- run while you're underwater, trying to get away. Oh from yeah, somebody. and you just can't move, or you move so slowly. Yeah, and every, and you just... every time my, I have the same dream scream is <laughs> every time. Every time I have a dream like that, I don't know why. I don't know what it's been. It's just been like that my whole life. And uh, Danielle will like. She'll be just as chipper as she is in life. Like she'll just roll over and she'll be like, "How's that? How could you about it?" <laughs> and then roll over again. I'm like, "What the fuck is? Well, I can't understand any of it. I'm half asleep myself." And I'm she's like, "She's fucking going sweet. On? I love Danielle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's just so. I don't know. It's just a personality thing. I got arrested yeah? while sleeping. I, maybe, once. maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, when you were naked. Oh, fuck your. Oh, I, I wasn't naked. You had underwear on. I had a pair of pa- flannel, flannel pajama pants. Pajama pants. The ones my mom sends me every year for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he wears those outside, mom. <laughs> Apparently, I do. <laughs> I work from home. That's what I'm in most yeah. of the time. <laughs> <laughs> on his head. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting, though. Have you talked about that on the show? We've mentioned yeah. it. I think I've talked. You about did. It. You told the story. I mean, on the I don't show. remember like anything early on, on. I think one of the early, early episodes. I just, yeah, go back and find it. Yeah, I just know I woke up with a cop saying, what the fuck are you on? I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I am. <laughs> <laughs> Forget what I'm on. Where the fuck am, am I? I? <laughs> <laughs> and also, do you have a stick of butter? I'm hungry. <laughs> I think I was hungry. They gave me breakfast in jail, though. 
Oh, because you're a firefighter? No, because I was in jail. Oh. And it was breakfast time. Just the normal. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got the inmate. Yeah. All right. It yeah. was shitty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. And yeah. so you can call me President Silverman, and I'll call you Reverend, whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> uh, listener Allie Unsworth sent us in a story a couple weeks ago. We, I had it open for, I think, our last two episodes, and we didn't end up getting to it. Oh, yes. Uh, about the family Christian stores, all 240 of them. I've never even seen one of these. Going out of business and closing. Well, weren't they praying? Uh, they didn't see, pray hard enough, I guess. When I hear family Christian store, I think of Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Yeah. They're the probably the most glaring example of it. The, the greens. Well, this is... Although I, I mean, these Walmart's are, pretty Christian, too. So the though. family Christian stores are stores devoted solely to selling religious iconography, uh, books, okay. audio. Yeah. yeah. Know, and they are actually named family Christian stores. Yeah. Yeah. It's So it's not just a... Generic it's not a hobby store that happens to be owned by a religious family. Yeah. This is their business. They sell religious bullshit. You want a really funny story that's really quick before I start on this one? Sure. I had a teacher in high school that ran a bookstore called The Christian Book Nook. She went to jail for having sex with a student. Oh. Hmm. She no longer has The Christian Book Nook store. <laughs> The book nook. Story done. When <laughs> when I was she did it all for the nookie. Yeah. When I was in high school, <laughs> when I was in high school, I was on the diving team. Thanks, and, Ryan. And the, You're welcome. <laughs> the the coach for the diving and swimming team was named Larry Swim. I should you not. And we had a one legged track coach <laughs> who <laughs> ran off. <laughs> was his name Peg? It better have been Peg or Lucky or something. We had a one legged track coach who ran off. To Las Vegas with a 16-year-old sophomore. Now, bullshit that he ran <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> American public education. It was everybody. like, it was, yeah, crazy shit when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all 240 Christian or family <laughs> Christian stores are closing. Do you guys, sorry. Do you, <laughs> no, no. do you guys remember that David Tell joke from way back? Which one? Where he talks about that, going to new cities. And he's like... uh He's talking about getting directions and it all, everybody wants to give you advice on, you know, how, where to, he's like, but no, fuck that. I'm asking the guy with the one leg because he he's going to know the shortest way to get there and you're not climbing any ladders or hopping fences or none of that shit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, David uh, tells funny. <laughs> yeah. But uh, when I saw this story initially, it reminded me that. Uh, Atheists of Utah has adopted a section of State Street in downtown Salt Lake City where we do our adopt a highway cleanup. And along that stretch of State Street, there used to be a Christian store like okay. this where they sold crucifixes, crosses, books, you know, Christian books. All of your torture and, devices. Yeah, all of just all of the paraphernalia associated with religious belief in, and belief in nonsense. But that store closed like two years ago, and it it always struck me as funny that this Christian store just happened to be in the in a, one in the one mile section of State Street that Atheists of Utah had adopted for the cleanup, and so and now they it's had a porn a, shop. So they had atheists out cleaning yeah. in front of their store at least three times a year. Uh, but this story comes to us from Christianity Today. Ah. It's so sweet and lovely. It says that more than two years ago, suppliers forgave family Christian stores $127 million in debt. Holy Ooh. fuck. So that it could remain open. Today, Jesus. the chain which bills itself as the world's largest retailer of Christian-themed merchandise announced it is closing all of its stores after 85 years in business. Must have been doing good business. Huh. For 85 years. Yeah. But look at that amount of debt they had. Yeah. Family Christian, which employed more than three th <laughs> nice young. <laughs> Family what? Christian, which employed no, more than back. more than three thousand people in more than two hundred forty stores across thirty six states, blamed changing consumer behavior and declining sales. Yeah, sure. As the reason they are going out of business. Quote We had two very difficult years post bankruptcy. <laughs> Uh, obviously, I, difficult years prior to the yeah, bankruptcy yeah. as well, <laughs> Chuck. Stated President what Chuck Bengochia. What the fuck Bengochia. is his last name? Bengochia. 
I Dis- got ya. Despite improvements in product assortment and the store experience, sales de- continued to decline. In addition, we were not able to get the pricing and terms we needed from our vendors to successfully compete in the market. Uh-huh. Which we, means we try to get shit for free, but they won't give it to us. <laughs> yeah, that means that my parents did a good job running the store, and we totally fucked it up, but it's the consumer's fault. We have prayerfully looked at all possible options, trusting God's plan for our organization. Uh-huh. And the difficult decision to liquidate <laughs> is our only recourse. Okay. He prayed, right. and God said, give the fuck up. <laughs> God said, crucify your company. <laughs> Tyndale House Publishers Chairman and CEO Mark Taylor called the stores, quote, an important outlet for Christian books, gifts, and Bibles for many decades. All of us at Tyndale House Publishers feel a sense of grief over Family Christian's decision to close the entire chain of stores. Family's millions of customers now have even fewer options for finding these wonderful, life-giving products. The entire Christian community, indeed the entire nation, will be poorer as a result of this pending closure. At the same time that we share our sense of loss, we express our appreciation to Chuck Bengocia and his staff, who have worked so hard over the past few years to make the chain of stores succeed. What the fuck? We will pray for the many family employees who will lose their jobs. He, he worked to make the stores succeed. Obviously, he did a good job. Oh, the story gets pretty juicy. Oh, no. And this is as reported by a, a Christian, Christian website. Families, family Christians' financial problems weren't new. In 2012, the chain bought itself back from private equity owners and in 2013 promised to donate all profits to serving widows and orphans around the world. But only $300,000 was ever contributed to charities over the following two years exhibiting how slim the margins were on the $450 million in gross sales the chain generated over the same period. And I call bullshit on that. I call bullshit on $450 million in sales only getting $300,000 in net revenue from that. How How much in debt did they owe when they bought everything back? They didn't. I mean, well, um, no, it just says when they bought it back from the uh, uh, private equity owner, unless they were only marking things up. By well, they bought fraction. it. They bought it back. But as we'll see in a moment. Oh, okay. So they bought it back, but <clears throat> that clears them of all of the debt that they had, because their creditors forgave all of that debt. Oh, you're yeah. a fine. He's a good Christian man. He's a fine, upstanding Christian man. I'm sure that he's going to make good. We're we're going to do great business with them in the future. So we'll forgive their debts for now. And going forward, we'll, we'll certainly recoup those losses because he's a fine, upstanding Christian man. Mm-hmm. In 2015, Family Christian filed for bankruptcy. Despite <laughs> $230 million in gross revenues in 2014, <laughs> what? the retailer owned owed more than $90 million. Sales of $305 million in 2008 had steadily shrunk to a projected $216 million in 2015. Which is interesting news in and of itself, right? So over the course of seven years, their sales declined from three hundred five million to two hundred sixteen million. So seventy five, eighty, my yeah. math is my ma- am I mathing right? We're we're all brain dead right now. A lot. It declined a lot. But twenty seven Christian publishers, including Intervarsity Press, Baker, Charisma Media, David C. Cook, and Abingdon Press objected to the retailer's restructuring plan under which the chain would get to own $20 million worth of items bought on consignment free and clear without paying the suppliers. They were just trying to take advantage. Yeah, so they were going to wipe out all of the debt that that they had incurred over the years and keep all of the merchandise that was already in the stores. It sounds like they'd read Trump's book. It sounds like... They were going to take advantage of their reputation as yeah. fine, upstanding Christians to fuck over all of their yeah. suppliers. Because daddy needs a new yacht. The Christian vendors also criticized the way the terms benefited Richard Jackson, who owned Family Christian, the first lien holder in line to be paid with any proceeds, and the purchasing organization. The creditors claimed Jackson sought to complete this scheme to own the debtors for a mere $4 million in cash and reduce the 
the debt of the companies by over $90 million by acquiring the, by acquiring the debtors in 20 days. The creditors filed a lawsuit. In response, Family Christian pulled its proposal. The chain headed to auction, where three of the four bidders were liquidators. That dismayed the Christian suppliers even more because then they get nothing. They get nothing. Yeah, they're gonna they're just gonna sell things off and yeah. and liquidate all of the assets, and that's that. No one except the banks and the attorneys will get any money from a liquidation. Tyndale's Taylor stated when Family Christian's bankruptcy bid was first announced. We hope Family Christian can survive the chain of stores. Our industry needs them. No, it sounds like it's a good thing they're gone because the industry was getting fucked by them. So what's interesting here is that FCS Acquisition won the auction. You know what FCS Acquisition stands for? Family Christian Stores Acquisition. Uh, (laughs) I thought it was fuck Christian shit. Won the auction for (laughs) Family Christian Christian Stores. stores. Hmm. But its victory was promptly tossed out by a judge who called the process flawed and FCS acquisition an indisputable insider. I wonder why they would have come to that conclusion. The name isn't to give away or anything. So Family Christian asked its creditors to vote. Either choose one of the liquidators and get nothing, or choose FCS acquisition and keep the doors open and the lights on. Creditors would lose their $20 million in consignment items, but would at least have a place to continue selling new goods. It's it's a lose-lose. Or so they hoped. Yeah, I would, I would, if I were them, I'm like, no, fuck it. You've fucked us over too many times already. Liquidate the shit. We aren't doing business with you yeah. anymore. Yeah, we've already forgiven $170 million in yeah. debt. You want to keep this $20 million in supplies that we have on top of that. Yeah. And then we're supposed to give you more, more items. In hopes that you won't do it again. <laughs> right, right. Christians have this way of not really learning very good lessons. No. Nah. Faced with these options, Family Christian's creditors voted 162 to 7 to sell to FCS Acquisition. Uh, because he's a good Christian. Yeah. Man. It's run by fine, upstanding how, Christian how people. How can he be a bad person? He's Christian. Family Christian shed about $127 million in debt, $108 million of it to the creditors who voted for them to stay open. For the short term, they will be healthy, and if they can adapt to the retail challenges ahead, they may be successful. Christian hmm. literary agent Steve Laub told Christian Times at the time. Wait, what's his name? Steve Laub. Where is that? L-A-U-B? L-A-U-B-E. B-E. Sounds kind of Jewy to me. <laughs> <laughs> he only sells Old Testaments. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. their financial health came at the expense of a number of publishers, suppliers, and authors. Yeah. I'm using a very plucky voice because that's well, how I imagine this guy to be. <laughs> I wonder if they were sticking with this company because they were the world's largest distributor of Christian. Well, sure. I mean, it's it's so who it's like, else oh, are they going to sell this like, stuff that's to? That's sixty percent right. of our people that we sell through, so yeah. Yeah. we need them to survive, or else we all die. Yeah, <sighs> for sure. I'm so tired of this story. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Dude. <laughs> Gospel Light Publishing, which sold Sunday School and Vatican and Vacation Bible School curriculum through Family Christian, filed for bankruptcy the same day of the vote. Ooh. It was a contributing factor in our need to seek court protection. Gospel Light CEO Dave Thornton told Christian Times at the time, we had to write off $143,000 in expected income, and we're a smaller family-owned Christian publishing company that didn't have deep enough pockets to sustain that, combined with other ex- unexpected losses this spring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The dog died. Yeah, but, I mean, unexpected losses, sure. But for how long have you been profiting millions? What have you done with it? What the fuck? You have to prepare for unexpected losses in business. God you, said you, you, to you, buy a Ferrari. Yeah, but they made a business that was... Gotta put some money where, away where, for a rainy day. Where we're talking about numbers that are in the hundreds of millions in revenue. Well, that's for the what store. What the fuck have you been doing? Well, when you figure that God will provide and all of your fellow Christians certainly won't swindle you, what are you, what are you left to, well, what are you left to do? Well, then why isn't every Christian a trillionaire? I mean, it would be so obvious if that was actually the way that things worked, but it fucking isn't, you dimwits. Because Satan gets in there and corrupts things. Mm-hmm. He just thwarts God's plans all the time. God Sa- lays down these plans and well, Satan then- just gets in there and mucks <laughs> everything up. Then you'd be wise to worship Satan because he's clearly the more powerful God. <laughs> Satan told me I needed that Russian bride. Now I got a messy divorce. The nation's largest distributor of Christian products, also called Family Christians Bankruptcy, a contributing factor in speeding up its demise. 
Send the Light Distribution closed down last summer after losing about half a million dollars on Family Christian's bankruptcy. But President Glenn Bailey told CT the distributors like Amazon were mostly to blame. It's that (laughs) evil Amazon. Those online retailers. Yeah, yeah, it's not the fact that we named our company Send the Light Distribution. (laughs) Yeah. That has nothing to do with it. I thought they sold lightsabers. (laughs) <laughs> what this means for the industry is there is one less major distributor to feed the Christian store market, Laub told CT at the time. If their demise had been six months ago, I would have made the correlation to the bankruptcy. But today it is merely a reflection of the shift in retail buying patterns. How many Bibles do you need? It's it's not a reflection of the shift in belief away from religion. Yeah. It's just a shift away from buying patterns of people and we should point the finger at amazon for making it so easy for people to just buy online Mm. instead of going to a retail outlet and buying from a good christian company Mm -hmm. responding to news of the liquidation laub told ct today that family christians closing will have a deleterious effect on many communities which have relied on their local store for their christian products whether it be a greeting card book or bible while hard news for the publishing industry mm-hmm. to absorb, I suspect most companies will have limited their financial exposure, he said. Any loss is regrettable. Mm-hmm. I mean, where are they going to get Billy's new cross for his first cross burning? Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me, though, that the owner of, of these Christian stores just took total advantage. Yeah. I mean, they don't. This is this is as reported by a Christian yeah. website. Yeah. They don't go into any of the financial details of how much money the family took personally in salary, benefits, anything like that. Huge sums. Yeah, what, you know, what they took out of the business instead of reinvesting it or paying off their debtors ahead yeah. of time. So, this it sounds to me like the whole thing is really fucking hinky. Yep. But but all of these Christians just kept plucking along cuz they just figured He's right with God. He's going to get right with me on his debts to me, Shirley. No, Shirley didn't care. <laughs> and they got fucked for it. Yeah. A presidential press conference elicited the same reaction you get from people who just watch someone shoot fireworks out of his ass. <laughs> Which, when you think about it, is actually fitting. Because whenever Trump speaks, what is it essentially other than just random sparks and flames sputtering noisily out of a damaged asshole? So apparently Rick Wiles says that a satanic child murdering cabal is leading a coup against President Trump. I don't... Why do they got to be satanic and killing children to have a coup? I don't know. And why... Yeah, why is it always some like, demonic, satanic... Crazy. Because it's... Yeah. it's. <clears throat> have you guys seen Pete Holmes' joke about that guy that he sits next to at the magic show? Uh-uh. Uh... He has this bit where he, you know, like he's like this very open person who wants to just enjoy the magic show. And he's like, of course, I know they're tricking me. I don't care. That's part of the thing. But then he's like, there's always this one guy that's trying to figure it out the whole time. (laughs) And then and then like, you know, the magician will levitate. I'm killing the joke, but the magician will like levitate and the guy will turn to you and be like, it's magnets. I don't understand magnets. I don't understand this. Therefore, this is magnets. You know, that's exactly what the, it's. Anything that's against what they like is satanic. That's what it is. It's what whatever they've already made up their mind is the good thing. If something's in opposition, it's Satan. Always Satan. You know, no matter what. Always Satan. It's always Satan. Mm-hmm. Satan does love to murder him some children. Mm. Does he or does God? Well, Satan. I mean, it's it's uh, brunch. Brunch. Uh, they, yeah. They do it together over brunch? Well, yeah, that's what they eat. Oh. Mm. They got to murder the kid to eat it. Oh, right, right. Mm. It's not right to eat a living kid. President Donald J. Trump is besieged by a slithering cabal of seditious Ooh, slithering. snakes. Slithering sub- cabal of seditious snakes. He's slithering, slithering too much Harry Potter. Slithering snapes. <laughs> yep. In U.S. intelligence agencies, the FBI, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the fake news media, and other deep oh, state God. sectors. Everybody's against Donald Trump, apparently. <clears throat> Not only that, but now all of the fucking Republicans are going to start throwing out fake news at everything. Yeah. They're going to do just like what Donald Trump's done. No matter what it is, they're going to be like, if they don't like it, they're going to be like, fake news, fake news. That's, yeah. He's already doing it. They're going to do it. That's just how it's going to go from now on. If it's not, 
if it's not Fox or Breitbart, it's fake news. Yeah. I accurately <sighs> predicted last fall they would mm. aggressively mobilize to bring down his new administration. Wait, so is we he are- a prophet? Mm-hmm. You could have said that about either side have been right. He prophesied accurately that that's what would happen. Administration. We are witnessing an attempted coup in the United States of America. A coup? They yeah, just, but what's interesting to me is that there's no mention at all about the undermining of the sitting president to become the president elect from from all of the administration so far of Trump's campaign. No mention of that. Yeah. No, but there's definitely a coup from the other side for which there is absolutely no evidence or even speculation. Oh, I it's think- just that. Oh well, it's it's hard for my guy, so there must be a coup. I think the word he's looking for is a revolt. Yeah, there's resistance. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's opposition, not a coup. This is not political theater. It is deadly sedition against a constitutionally elected president. Well, there's of questions the United about States. that. Yeah, Russia, China, and other nations are <clears throat> watching and analyzing these events to determine whether Mr. Trump will be overthrown by the perpetual war, corruption, and pedophilia party. Oh, what? <laughs> the pedophilia uh, party? I missed that one. Man, has they have they grown that big now that they're threatening to overthrow Trump? The pedophilia party? Yeah. Wow. Has ruled America since they assassinated John F. Kennedy Who in was 1963. A, that was a Democrat, you fucking idiot. Do you like do you like Kennedy? What is he talking about? The pedophile uh, party has ruled america yeah they apparently the the pedophiles killed kennedy so that's a new one bush senior that, bush that is jr new, yeah. and ronald reagan will are we're all part of the pedophilia party yes is that what rick wiles just said yes and nixon i mean and, and there's no proof yet <laughs> that, <laughs> there never will be but i'm just <laughs> gonna throw out these wild accusations it is the russians rick that hacked the democratic national committee and gave John Podesta's emails to WikiLeaks. Right. But if it was the Russians, then they deserve the highest citizenship award that this <laughs> country can give anybody. Really? We should give the highest citizenship award for non-citizens? For, Wait, all of a sudden he loves espionage? Russia? Oh, fucking all the Republicans love Russia these days. They all think Putin's the man. He's the he's the other tough guy authoritarian. But they hated him six years ago. Well, that's because he was a bad guy then. One year ago, even. But now he's a good guy because he helped their guy yeah. be the guy. The because they expose the most vile, disgusting corruption I've seen in my lifetime. Because- really? All those cooking recipes and people asking about UFOs, that was a lot of... The most vile thing he's seen in his lifetime. What could that possibly be? Walking out of whatever church he attends regularly. <clears throat> yeah, would it be the would it be the pedophile priest of the Catholic Church that's been exposed? Would would it be what would it be? Would it be the Yeah, yeah. Catholic priests fucking children isn't the most vile no. thing he's seen. Nope. No, it's the it's, fact it's, it's the it's, fact that the Russians helped possibly uh helped American politicians commit treason and or perjury to get them undemocratically elected. But he doesn't think that's vile. He thinks that's, that's awesome. awesome. That, that's he thinks that's war. awesome. And they and by doing all of those illegal and unethical things, they helped expose the most vile thing, which was a woman candidate. Yes. Because let's face it, what is this really about, Rick? Pedophilia. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's uh, all uh, What pedoph- are you talking about? <laughs> I don't that's know. That's the church's <laughs> I'm lost. It's your church's thing. That's not the left. It's what the they pedophiles do. aren't the left. That's the church. What are you talking about? That's right at the it's heart of it. It's about pedophilia. They're fighting like cornered animals to prevent their pedophile network from being exposed. Is he talking about the pizza thing? Probably a little bit. A little. It's got to be a little. I would bit guess of Pizza, pizza Gate's got to fall into that. Yeah. An idiot. The real scandal is pedophilia. That's what this is all about, folks. It's not about Obamacare. What the fuck is he talking I about? Oh I'm God. lost. I can't even follow this fucking moron. And it's not about 
Russians hacking elections. Russian, yes, Russian hacking. And it's not about immigration. It's about pedophilia. It's about the darkest, most disgusting, vilest corruption you can imagine. They are all so caught up in pedophilia. Like, that's you all know, that's on their mind. They're all listening to Alex Jones. We're going to have plenty of blood, plenty of hot yeah. dogs. Nobody needs that many hot dogs. <laughs> it's code word. And if the American people ever find out the truth about their politicians and their celebrities in Hollywood and their TV idols and their favorite TV anchor men and women, and they find out all these great famous people, and they find out that they're just child molesters. <laughs> Do you think how uh, how many people do you think honestly believe this shit that all I, of these that there's a global network there's a global network of child uh, molesters out there the Uber driver I had two weeks ago definitely believed this shit yeah I don't I don't I don't know how many people actually believe it but there's certainly a huge amount of people that hear this stuff and go meh that's fine I mean I might not believe it but that's fine that he's saying it I'll just keep listening to his other stuff because he's got a huge listenership. Well, yeah, but they probably listen and think, yeah, you're right. But there are so many people on the right who are saying this kind of thing now yeah. that they think there's this global conspiracy of celebrities and politicians and who who only got into those positions because of and in order to molest children. Yep. How does that work? It doesn't. I mean, we it's, can't we can't keep CIA secrets from WikiLeaks, but right. he thinks there's this global conspiracy of all of these celebrities and politicians that we've uncovered zero evidence of that they're all pedophiles and they all are in their positions and got into those positions because they want to molest more children. Yes, to get a better to, to gain more access to these children to molest them. Disney. That's fucking crazy. It's fucking whack. Not only molesters, but child murderers. Yes. Oh. Sacrificing children to Satan. When they find out, they will drag their bloody carcasses down Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C. with meat hooks. They'll have meat hooks in their carcasses. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. This guy's looking to start another satanic panic. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're doing. He's he's not the only one. I think there's there's a lot of them that get on board with that kind of thing. I think they're still in the old satanic panic. These guys are old enough. They're still involved yeah. in that. Yeah. They won't be happy until more innocent people lose their freedom because of nonsense Whoa. bullshit like this that this guy is saying. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely fight their no fake basis war, They need whatsoever. a fake enemy. Yeah. Yeah. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! Uh, are you ready for some screaming? Not from us. <laughs> buttholes! <laughs> screaming phone to buttholes! It's got the burning in the butthole. Oh, God, there's some shit for you to pull. We That's have lamented the fact that we've not heard anything from our friend Pastor Manning we for talked quite about some it time. Before the show, even. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were delighted to find that, in fact, he's back in the news. He's returned. Not Jesus, but Pastor Manning. And I have to say that this particular story, I think, might be a whole lot of fun because Pastor James David Manning. Says the Trump is a demon, which is funny because he also said that Obama was a demon. Is it just anybody who becomes president is a demon? Yeah. I, I, I imagined that Pastor Manning would have thought that Trump was awesome. but He's an angel. No, right. apparently Trump is a demon who is having sex with ugly, stringy-haired slut, Kelly Conway. <laughs> I, I want to hear the two skeptical chaps do a David Pastor Man or Pastor <laughs> David Manning and see if it's even see if it's better than Dan's. There we go. I expect to hear that in a future episode of Two Skeptical Chaps. Oh. We'll play the clip so you can hear what he sounds like. I have treated the altar of God as a sacred place and should be looked upon as such. Now the Oval Office is 
not necessarily sacred, but certainly special, uh, and should be given the highest kind of respect. I simply want to go back to the Kellyanne Conway photo of her on the sofa, on her knees, with her dress jacked up and her legs <laughs> wide open. Wide open. Her dress isn't jacked up. It's a short dress. dress yeah. It's a dress it's, that falls above it's, her knees. It's probably, what, two inches above her knees when she's sitting down it's there? It's not like she hiked her dress up no. so that she could sit this she's way. She's not wearing also a her, skirt. Her knees are not wide open either. They're just sort of in a natural position. Wow. Yeah. We're, we're honestly defending, yeah, we're defending Kellyanne Conway. Kill, Kelly, Kelly, <laughs> Kellyanne Conway. For, yeah. for sitting when she really should have been standing in this photo, but uh, yeah. Um, or or at least not sitting like this. But really, it, who fucking cares how she's sitting on a couch? It I, doesn't fucking matter. It's not a big deal. No. I saw all my, not all of my, but a bunch of my lefty friends, you know, making all kinds of shit about this. And yeah. there there were some funny memes. The, the yeah. funniest one I saw was, you know, how her. brave she was after... After losing her yeah. legs in the in the war on Christmas, <laughs> I thought I thought it would have been the one where she was sitting on Trump's face. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't uh, see that one. But the the one that I thought yeah. was pretty funny was you know how brave of her to go back to work after losing her legs in the war on Christmas. But that I mean she's funny. she's plopped down on a fucking couch. Who who cares? Yeah. How she's sitting. What's important is. That she's not paying any attention at all to the important people that are in yeah. the room. Well, I think that's what it is. It's indicative of, of her being, uh, not respectful enough of the position she holds. And she showcases that in every facet of her life. This yeah. is just one of them. And I think, I think that's where most of the criticism is come, coming from, whether it's articulated well or not. Yeah. At least for me, anyway. Yeah. Um, and go ahead and call her a stringy head slut. <laughs> Whoa. All right, that's for you, Dan. That's and your I'll quote right there. Call her a stringy head slut. <laughs> this is one of the ugliest, vilest things I've ever seen. There's your really. spike. Um, in such a <laughs> sacred place. And Tribulation Trump is standing there, and Amarosa is standing beside, and all them Hamite men are standing yeah. there. Oh, yeah. shit. The Hamite men. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, oh my God. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All of them Hamite men are standing there. Men are standing yeah, there, yeah. you know, getting erections. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> There's only one guy in that photo that might have an erection and he's trying to cover it up. There's only one. Yeah, there's one dude. What the fuck? Oh, two. Wait, Trump's also got his hands over his crotch. Those Hamite men with a Vegemite in their pocket. Oh, Jesus. Never, I, 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 you know, it shows you the level of demonic sexual Demonic yeah. spirits as I, I, <laughs> demonic sexual, sexual demonic spirits. That's two times of demonic. <laughs> De That's demonic squared. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he knows what that means. I don't blame Kellyanne Conway for that. I blame Tribulation Trump because he's a demon. Tri Tribulation Trump. Trump. Tribulation <laughs> Trump. Oh my God. There's some awesome one-liners coming this out of this fucking, one. This is the best. This is the best. Oh. Tribulation <laughs> Trump. Yes, and obviously he's having yeah. sex with her. And what? Obviously. obviously. <laughs> he just moves right on as if everyone knows that. Like, obviously he's having sex with her. Oh, my God. This is the best. This is like the shortest video I've uh. ever seen of his, and it's the best. And... She probably just feels like, you know, I can be like this around him because I think he likes me that way. Yeah. You, 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 wait, 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 the, wait, wait. He he's obviously that. having sex with her and she thinks he, likes he might way. like me that way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure sex is a good indication. He likes me that way. You, well, maybe this not. is the ugliest Slut I've ever seen. And, oh. and they're very close. Conway and Trump. This is a ugly, stringy head slut. Good thing we don't have libel laws in this country, right? <laughs> Jesus. This is an ugly, stringy head slut. <laughs> Happy International Happy Women's, Women's Day. Day yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm going to pull so many great one-liners out of that. That's fucking awesome. Thank you, Pastor James Damon, yeah. David Manning. Jesus was kind of stringy-haired, wasn't he? I mean. But no. was he a slut? Yeah. I don't know. They don't talk about that very much. He loved them prostitutes. He did. That's true. He was very kind to them. Mm, he had a foot fetish, too. I bet. He liked, he liked, he liked to wash people's feet. And lick them. Mm. It's a thing he did. And lick them, yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know about the all licking. All kinds of hey, stories about that. All I know is I heard he gave you a shilling if you sucked his big toe. What? I don't know. I'm a just, shilling? Yeah, I didn't a know it was. A shilling? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the first coin that popped in my head that was not American. Not pence? <laughs> Jesus, we'll give you one yen. <laughs> now that you were special if you got a yen. <laughs> you got... Well, I think it was shekel, right? Well, um, today you'd get a pence. Yeah. Trump pence? pence. A trumpence. Ooh. A trumpence. <laughs> the, a tribulation trumpence. <laughs> Tribulation. Tribulation. That, that's a tribulation where they take trumpence. all the money from you. <laughs> trumpence. Trumpence. But that'll wrap it up for tonight's recording of our little thing that we do. Eh, yeah. I just want to thank all of the people who listen. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it. We do love you. I've been thinking about that since last week when I was like, you know, I can't believe we're this many shows in and people still want to listen. And you were like, you can't or something. And I was like, <laughs> did I yeah. sound, did I sound you like, just, yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't know. You, yeah. But it was, yeah, well, kind of, I mean, you were kind of like, really? And I'm like, yeah, no, seriously. Like not about you guys necessarily, but just that people, well, maybe they don't want to hear me. I don't know. I don't think the list, Never mind. Forget they I missed, said anything. They missed your <laughs> Matt rants when you were gone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they did. And you I guess they did. I made Tamel almost die. What? Why? Well, I guess he was almost choked on his breakfast when I said the big black cock. Because Ryan was shit. talking about his yeah. dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, you can't be eating your breakfast when you listen to the show. True. Can't be eating your breakfast when you listen to the show. Because I'm going to make a joke. A choke or a joke? <laughs> I think he was trying to make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do want to thank our Patreon patrons, Savid, Grant, Taylor, Utah Outcasts, Wes Aaron, Christy Kalbach, and Andrew Vodopich. Thank you very much. Thank you all very, very much. I, I really appreciate it. If you would like to become a Patreon patron of the show because you love us and would like to hear how much we love you for doing so, you can do that. By going to patreon.com slash godlessrevolution and pledging as little as $1 per episode. And we would think you're awesome for doing that. And it would help us continue to do the show. It would help us pay for things like our web hosting and for our Podbean site where we have to upload the show and for Stitcher and for the equipment and for beer and pizza and shit that just keeps the show running like we always do about this time. Yeah. <laughs> beer is the lubrication. I am just an assholder. Okay. Justin? Is that your first name? Mm hmm Okay. Ah. I am just an assholder. <laughs> I thought I felt a pinch. Hmm. Should be more of a cupping. Oh, yeah. yeah well, you got to pinch it, too. I'm just a holder. Just an assholder. Yeah. <laughs> not an, I'm, not, I'm not an ass pincher. Right? Okay. Do you guys not remember that from last week? No, no. I don't have any idea. Just an assholder? No. Okay, what? well, maybe our listeners, if they listen to it right in a row, they'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my sign off last week. Ah. Uh, there was a joke from last, no, last week's you, show. You didn't have your founded yeah. in a hole in 81? Yeah, I've got that too. But oh. this this was my one from last week. Oh, okay. Huh. Okay. And you guys got it then, so I don't know what's going on. I hope you all had a fabulous International Women's Day and that you have a safe and happy St. Patrick's Day or as Potato. I like to call it, the Irish Cultural Appropriation Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Ryan Patrick fucking Duffy. Don't take my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so, farewell. Pretty strong finish, you guys. Good night. Yeah, that, was, that was a good one. I'll see you again <laughs> next week. When we have our special guest. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Stu DeHaan. <laughs> Fucking Taylor, man. See? <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> the same ones. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs>
What the fuck is wrong with you guys and your fucking gloves? Sh- gl- feet gloves. Uh, he fucking posted that just to bug Dan Ellis. Yep. Well, it bugged me too. <laughs> I wonder when uh, Basilius is going to come get beers with us. Basilius? Yeah. Basilius. Did you call him Basilius? I didn't say silly ass. <laughs> You silly it sounded, ass. It sounded like you said I put an, I put an extra, or something. I put an extra like ass in there. <laughs> you guys ever watch the gaming lemon? Yeah, I started watching them like last week. They're fucking funny. Yeah, dude, I love that. <laughs> That's hilarious. The gaming lemon? Women. <clears throat> No, Lemon. Oh, I was watching the gaming women. Oh, no. Women aren't funny. No, this guy, though. (laughs) (laughs) Well. (laughs) Happy International Women's Day. (laughs) Oh, God. I voted for Trump. I just want to guess another right now.